Sunday changes everything. The stone has been rolled away. The women have received a message. The soldiers have retreated in fear. The disciples have run to the tomb. Sunday changes everything. Doubts are put in their place. Miracles are performed. The disciples eat breakfast made by the king. Jesus is on the loose. And because Jesus is on the loose, death is conquered. Funeral clothes are cast aside. Light shines forth from the tomb. Hope crushes fear. Faith conquers doubt. Belief moves mountains. Relationship consumes religion. God's love wins. Jesus changes everything. Because Jesus is on the loose, your tears are wiped away. Your sin is washed away. Your life will never be the same. Jesus changes everything. And because Jesus changes everything, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus changes everything. Good morning, friends, and greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Friends in Christ, it is truly a joy and a privilege to worship together again during the season of Easter because we are an Easter people. And friends, we know that Easter changes everything. When that stone was rolled away and the resurrected Christ stepped out in victory, everything in this world, everything in our lives changed in an instant. And friends, we are part of that change today simply by gathering as God's people and worshiping together in spirit and in truth. Friends, suddenly light and faith, suddenly hope and relationship, love and possibility are all before us, ready and willing, able to be changed by God in Jesus Christ. Friends, if you come to this time and space longing for that change to come in your life, then you are in the right place. For here we meet Jesus the Christ who is on the loose in this world, who is on the loose in our lives, changing everything. Friends, on behalf of the people and the ministry of the Old First Presbyterian Church in Huntington, New York, I welcome each and every one of you into this time and space to worship God together, and I invite us all to take that next step forward in naming and claiming the power of our faith story, in naming and claiming the power of Jesus Christ to meet us in the midst of that story and change everything, to rewrite the stories of our faith. So that no matter who we are or where we have been, God may redeem us in Jesus Christ and rewrite our faith stories to do powerful and wonderful things in Jesus Christ. For He is our Savior, our Messiah, the Lord of our lives, the great Shepherd of our souls. And friends, it is with great joy that we worship God together. Friends, please join me in today's call to worship from the 23rd Psalm, and may we hear in these familiar words new reasons to have hope in our faith stories and in the ability of our Christ to change and rewrite those stories for the glory of God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters, restoring my soul and guiding me in righteous paths. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies, anointing me with oil, my cup overflows. 
goodness and mercy shall follow me, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Friends in Christ, restoring our minds, bodies, and spirits, allowing our faith stories to be rewritten by the risen Christ, I invite us to lift our hearts and voices together in the joyful and joy-filled praise of the Lord our God. Friends in Christ, as we think together throughout today's service of worship about what it means for us to lay claim to our faith stories, our faith stories that may often be named and claimed and rewritten by the risen Christ, today's scripture readings are perfect illustrations of that reality, that truth in our lives and in our world. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 20. And in this moment in the history of the church, we meet a man named Saul, whose faith story is not one to be proud of. And yet, in an encounter with the risen Lord Jesus Christ, his faith story is rewritten, friends. He becomes Paul. And we know what Paul's story does for the story of the church, its believers, its faith, and even our lives still today. Friends in Christ, let us listen with open hearts and open ears as together we share God's Word from the book of Acts. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, 
Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment, he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, so that he may regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately, something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is the Son of God. Friends, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to our God. And now, friends, I invite all of our young disciples who are gathered with us for worship today to gather a bit closer to their screens as we think about what this moment in Saul's life means for us. And we peek ahead to our second reading about the disciple Peter. And we think about what these meetings with Jesus Christ mean for our faith stories and the opportunity God has each and every day to rewrite our stories so that we may proclaim the glory and praise of Jesus Christ. A very special good morning and welcome to all of our wonderful young disciples who are gathered together for worship as we continue to praise the risen Lord Jesus Christ throughout this season of Easter. Young disciples, today we are going to be talking about two of my absolute favorite stories of people being restored in all of Scripture. We just heard the story of Saul, who encountered Jesus on his way to be very mean to the believers of Jesus Christ. And in that encounter, he saw God, he knew God, he learned to follow God, and he became Paul, who did great things for the church of Jesus Christ. And in our second reading, a little bit later in today's service, we're going to be reminded of the disciple Peter. And remember, young disciples, Peter has had some great moments in faith where he has made some wonderful proclamations of faith and he just seems to get it. 
But back in our Holy Week worship, we were also reminded that when given the opportunity to stand with Jesus, Peter denied ever even having met Jesus. And friends, I love these two stories for us as young disciples of faith because sometimes we feel like we don't have a faith story. We see all the adults in the life of the church and we think about all the things that they have done and all the things that they have seen and they have these wonderful stories of faith. And we think that we're just too young. That maybe God can't use us yet. Or that we don't have a story. Or maybe our story isn't wonderful and happy like some of their stories. Maybe we've had a really tough understanding of faith in our lives, even as young disciples. And the beauty, friends, about talking together about Saul, who becomes Paul, and talking about Peter, and how Jesus restores him and gives him the opportunity to speak for God and do the things God has called us to do, is that it is a reminder for each and every one of us young disciples that we, that you, have a faith story. And if there are seasons where you struggle to lay claim to that story and feel like that story is doing good things in the world, then these two stories, Saul and Peter, remind us that no matter what, no matter how far away we find ourselves from God's will, no matter how many mistakes we make, no matter how much we struggle to celebrate our story, God is not finished with us yet. Young disciples, God has done great things in your life. It is why you are who you are. You are a child of God. You are a disciple of Jesus Christ. You are part of the church of Jesus Christ. And just by that alone, you are doing wonderful things to share the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. But if you ever doubt that, young disciples, or at any point in your life, you feel like your story of faith has gone a direction that you are not happy with, then simply spend time in the presence of God. Listen for God to speak. And I promise you, young disciples, God will rewrite your story into something beautiful and wonderful and powerful. You will live your life as a witness to the love and grace of Jesus Christ beginning and continuing today and for the rest of your lives. Young disciples, will you join me in prayer and giving thanks to God for this wonderful gift? You may repeat after me. Dear God, we give you thanks that you have called us to have a faith story. God, we trust you to rewrite that story as we do wonderful things to share the love of Jesus Christ with a world in need. In Jesus' name. And together, young disciples, may we say with one another, Amen. Young disciples, know that you have a powerful faith story because you are loved by God in Jesus Christ. And if you ever doubt that, Simply trust God and invite Jesus, your Savior, to rewrite that story and you will continue to do amazing things for the kingdom of God. Thanks be to God, young disciples, as together we say, Amen. Friends in Christ, as we talked with our young disciples, 
We have an opportunity today not only to meet and remember Saul, but we also have an opportunity in our second reading to revisit a familiar disciple in the story of our faith, Peter, who when we lost saw him was denying ever having met Jesus the Christ and abandoning him in his hour of need. And yet, today, friends, in the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19, Peter has an opportunity to meet again his Savior, the risen Lord, and find that even in these moments of resurrected joy, Jesus is already about the business of rewriting faith stories to empower his message of love to be shared with the world. Friends, let us listen together for God's word. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach. But the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish. For they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish. A hundred fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast... Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. Friends, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, friends in Christ, since our celebration of the resurrection of our Savior, 
Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday. Each of our last two services of worship has increasingly focused our attention on our faith stories, our testimonies, inviting us to consider both those people who were instrumental in sharing their faith with us, but also to think about those whom we are being called by God today to share our faith stories with so that they too may join us in growing in the journey of faith. We have reflected together on the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus, recognizing the risen Christ in the breaking of bread with hearts burning and eyes open to a faith story no longer defined by sin and death, but by new and everlasting life in the grip of resurrected Easter joy. We have named and claimed the joyful and joy-filled truth that each and every one of us is on a journey of faith. And that no matter what point along that journey we happen to be, all of us, friends, you and me, all of us together are creating, are writing, are living our faith stories. Stories forged in the love of Jesus Christ. A story of how God has grown and nurtured the gift of faith in us and through others. The story of how God continues to guide, shape, nourish, nurture, and inspire the gift of faith within us still today. But friends, what if we are at a point in our lives, what if we are at a point in our faith stories where the path forward is unclear? What if we feel today like God is not writing a story upon our hearts and our lives that is worth living or worth sharing? What if we are haunted by the shame and guilt of our past? Mistakes made, promises broken, roads traveled and not traveled. What if, friends, we look at our faith stories and we just don't like? the story that is being played out in our hearts and in our lives? What if we are wanting something more? What if we want nothing more than to experience the life-changing, soul-shaking, heart-burning, eye-opening, story-rewriting faith that is unleashed upon us in this Easter season? as we continue to marvel together in the power, the passion, and the purpose of God's great Easter miracle in the empty tomb. If only there were people in Scripture that could meet us in those moments. If only there were people that could offer us hope. That with God on our side, our faith story could and will be rewritten into stories of strength. Stories of redemption. Stories of salvation, purpose, hope, and possibility. If only, friends, look no further than today's readings from the book of Acts and the Gospel of John. To the lives and experiences, to the faith stories of Saul and Peter as powerful reminders in our lives, in our faith stories, that when it comes to God's presence in our journey, when it comes to our opportunity to follow the risen Savior as disciples of Jesus Christ, when it comes to our choice to live our lives in the powerful grip of the Holy Spirit, writing and rewriting the stories of our faith, God is not finished with us. In fact, friends, God is never finished with us because our faith stories, when trusted and placed into the hands of our God, are constantly being written and rewritten for the glory, honor, and praise of the risen Christ. We learn in today's reading from the book of Acts of a man named Saul. Saul, who is well known as a dangerous presence for the people of God. When we first meet him in verse 1, we find him, quote, breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. 
Saul is seeking out those who have made a choice to follow Jesus Christ in their lives, a choice to rewrite their faith stories in the life, death, and resurrection of God's promised Messiah and bring them bound in chains back to Jerusalem to face their punishment more likely than not, friends, death. Saul's faith story is one of terror, persecution, and fear. Yet, friends, when Saul meets God on the road to Damascus, when he experiences the risen Christ, he experiences a life-changing, soul-shaking, heart-burning, eye-opening, story-rewriting, awakening to faith. And God begins in that very moment to rewrite Saul's story, grounded in his newfound faith in Jesus Christ. Saul becomes Paul the writer of the majority of our New Testament, one of the greatest teachers, preachers, healers, and evangelists the world has ever known, a man who shared his faith story like no one before and perhaps no one after. With God, his story is rewritten. And then, friends, there is Peter. Oh, Peter. We know Peter all too well, do we not? That spirited, overzealous disciple of Jesus Christ who proclaimed one of the greatest confessions of faith in all of Scripture, announcing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Messiah. And yet, friends, when the chips were down and the eyes of the world were upon him, As Jesus was betrayed by those whom He loved, given over to the powers of this world, awaiting crucifixion on the cross, it was that same Peter who despite his deepest and most faithful intentions, denied even knowing, even having met Jesus, not once, not twice, but three times. In the greatest hour of need, For the Savior of the world, Peter, one of his closest followers, his trusted disciple, his beloved friend, denied ever having met or walked with or talked with, ever having ministered with or even known at all the one whom we knew and that he knew as the Christ. Friends, Peter's faith story has taken a dark and twisted turn. And yet with God, with Jesus Christ, with the risen Lord and Savior standing there on the shoreline and calling to Him, not once, not twice, but three times, asking Him, do you love me? Does that sound familiar, friends? Telling Peter to feed his sheep. Peter's faith story is rewritten. Denial becomes discipleship. Silence and shame become a voice crying out, preaching, teaching, and sharing the love of God and grace of Jesus Christ with a world in great need. In case it is not clear yet, friends, our God, our Christ, our Holy Spirit are about the business of transformation of writing and rewriting the story of a faith upon our hearts and lives so that no matter who we are or where we may have been, no matter how proud or ashamed we may be of the faith story of our past, with God, with Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit at work in our hearts and lives, God is always rewriting our faith stories, our testimonies, our experiences of the risen Christ in ways that allow us to bring glory, praise, and honor to the One who has given us new and everlasting life. Friends, if God can rewrite the persecution of Saul into the kingdom-building devotion of Paul, if God can rewrite the denial and shame, the guilt of Peter into the kingdom-building devotion of one of his most faithful followers, then imagine, friends, what God can do with you. What God can do with me 
What God can do with all of us, the body of Christ, if only we allow ourselves to put God at the center of our lives, to put Jesus Christ at the center of our faith journeys, to put the Holy Spirit in full control of guiding our thoughts, our words, and our deeds, so that who we are and what we do so that the story of faith we proclaim in the example of our lives may be part of the great love of God for all people, the great mercy of Jesus Christ for all who trust and believe, and the great power of the Holy Spirit to continue writing and rewriting our faith stories each and every day of our lives. But friends in Christ, that change, that beautiful dance of writing and rewriting our faith stories does not happen by chance. Because in both the lives of Saul and Peter, we see God rewriting the story of God's followers, not by random happenstance, but by deliberate and willful choice by deliberate and choice intention of those lives, of those stories for whom and in whom God is in the business of rewriting. Both Saul and Peter made an intentional choice in their lives to be obedient to God in Jesus Christ. Both Saul and Peter made an intentional choice in their lives to make time and space to listen for God's voice to speak and discern God's ways. Both Saul and Peter made an intentional choice to follow. To follow no longer their own selfish desires and fragile egos, but to follow Jesus to follow his example of loving others as God had loved them, of serving others as Christ had served them, and empowering others as the Holy Spirit had empowered them. And in doing so, friends, with God, their faith stories are rewritten. The entire course of their lives takes on a new trajectory leading them and countless others, leading us, friends, into the freely given gift of eternal life in the kingdom of our God. And friends, the same choice is there for us today. God has the power and the potential. Jesus Christ has the desire and the determination. The Holy Spirit has the ability and the authority to rewrite our faith stories today. No matter who we are, no matter where we are along our faith journey, no matter what mistakes have been made, no matter what lies before us, but only, friends, if we humble ourselves and surrender control. Allowing God to guide us, shape us, to write and rewrite our faith stories, creating new chapters of service and growth for the kingdom of God, uplifted by the love of God, nourished by the grace of Jesus Christ, and inspired by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit each and every day of our lives. Friends, our lives, our hearts, our faiths, our stories, may and will be rewritten with God. But only, friends, if we make that choice each and every day of our lives to follow Jesus Christ. And that means spending time in His presence through prayer and through study. That means listening for His voice to speak through devotion and discernment. That means following His direction, even when it takes us to places and leads us to experiences that stretch us so far from our comfort zones that we do not even know what to do with ourselves. It means loving God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. That means living as the Lord has required us to live to act with justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Friends, this is the only way for us as God's people today to experience our own Damascus moment with Saul. 
or for us to meet Jesus on the shoreline like Peter and surrender control of our lives, allowing God to rewrite our faith stories as we follow our Savior into each new day, friends, in Christ for the power, for the purpose, and for the privilege of rewriting our faith stories with God. May we join together in giving thanks to God this day, today, tomorrow, and for the rest of our lives. Friends, thanks be to our God as together God's people say, Amen. Friends in Christ, while it is true that today and every day we are called to be disciples of the Lord, it is especially true on this Mother's Day Sunday when we are reminded that there are special people in each and every one of our lives and certainly in the life of our church family who have taken that call to discipleship to a special place in our hearts and in our lives. Of course, friends, we are talking about all of the incredible women that we are blessed to have, not only in our individual faith lives, our own faith stories, but also all of the amazing women of our church family who continue to live and give of themselves in ways that allow their faith stories to speak to us about the mothering and nurturing love of our God in Jesus Christ. Today, we honor the women in our lives. 
We honor the women of our church family. We offer this special time, this special prayer, honoring and naming and claiming the tremendous gift of faith that you are in our lives and in our faith stories, in the life of our church and its faith story. For friends in Christ, you have shown us what it means to love and serve God, and for that we are grateful. Friends in Christ, for the gift of the women of our lives, the women in our church family, the women who have lived to make Christ real in our hearts and in our lives, I invite us to bow together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the women of our lives. We give you thanks for the women of our families, the women of our church families, the women of our communities, the women of this world. We pray for all who stand in that gap of faith and show us each day what it means to be examples of God's love. We especially pray today for those who are like Tamar, struggling with infertility or miscarriage. We pray for those who are like Rachel, who see others become pregnant while still they wait. We pray for those who are like Naomi, who have known the bitter sting of a child's death. We pray for those who are like Joseph and Benjamin, whose mothers have passed away. We pray for those like Moses' mother, who have put children up for adoption and have trusted another family to love their child into adulthood. We pray for those who are like Pharaoh's daughter, called to love children who are not yours biologically. We pray for those who are watching or who have watched as their mothers have aged and disappeared into the long goodbye of dementia. We pray for those like Mary, who are pregnant now and waiting breathlessly for the miracle of your child. We pray for those whose children have turned away, who have closed the door on relationship and left us brokenhearted. And like Hagar, you who are mothering alone. We pray for those whom motherhood is your greatest joy and most challenging struggle all rolled into one. For those watching your children battle substance abuse, legal matters, mental illness, or other situations which you can only watch unfold. For those who do not wish to be a mother, who are not married, or who in other ways do not fit into the norms that society pressures us to feel. For those who see themselves reflected in all, in some or in none of these stories, this day, wherever and whoever you are, we walk beside you. You are loved. You are seen. You are worthy. And may each of you know the deep and abiding love of our amazing God, who is the very best example of a parent that any of us may ever know. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for all of the families we belong to. We thank you for parents and grandparents and great-grandparents, for the generations who started our families and all they gave to us. Today, we thank you for all who mothered us, grateful for their care and their guidance. We pray for mothers throughout this world and remember those that are caring for others in the midst of uncertain times those struggling with economic upheaval, those who know sorrow because someone they cherish has died or left, those who live in pain or fear or face some kind of discrimination. Surround these women, surround these families with your love and courage. Bring them support from friends and neighbors. Guide each child or young person in their care into a bold new future. We pray for the family of nations in this time of conflict and war. Change the hearts of leaders bent on destruction or conquest. Give wisdom and courage to those who seek justice through peaceful negotiation. 
and protect those who offer themselves in aid and advocacy. We pray for each other and for our church family. We give you thanks for the friendship and fellowship we share and the unique gifts that each one brings to our life together. Rekindle our energy for ministry and mission in the name of the One who writes and rewrites our faith stories. Hear us, O Lord, our God, as together we offer ourselves in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends in Christ, we have come together to worship the risen Savior in the season of Easter. We have come together to name and claim the truth that each and every one of us has a faith story to live and to share with this world. But friends, we have also recognized in our worship that sometimes the stories of our faith have gone in directions that we do not want them to remain. And sometimes we find ourselves in the position of people like Saul and Peter. And friends, when those moments come, may we trust as we go out into this world to love and serve the Lord our God, that our God, our Savior, our Holy Spirit always have the opportunity to rewrite our faith stories, to redeem us, to name us and claim us, to send us out, to live as examples of Jesus Christ, risen and active in this world today. Friends, no matter what story your life and your faith are telling today, God is present with you. God is there writing and rewriting the story of your faith so that all of us may go knowing that we are part of a larger story of love and grace, of mercy and justice, of forgiveness and freedom, living in the world so that all may know the power and presence of the risen Christ. Friends in Christ, as we go out to share our stories with others, May we go uplifted by the love of God, nourished by the life of Jesus Christ, and inspired by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore as together God's people say, Amen. Praise God from blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures Father, Son, and Soul.